Hello, my name is Pressel70 and in this video I will be showing you how to create your very first complex items in executable items premium. In the premium version of executable items, in the free in like the free version, the premium item version, we can create more than one activators which leads to more possibilities. But in terms of complex items I suggest like it's better to make the make complex items like the simple type into a more difficult type. So, for example, in this video, I will sh shall be creating few examples. Okay, so the first example I will be making is a stick item. So, the design of this item is that if we click on a block, it will save. The XYZ coordinates of the block, we click that, and when we do a left click, it will strike lightning on that location. Okay, let's start. Let's create a lightning item. Let's name it a lightning stick. Okay, let's add the glow and let's put the functions in the lore to make it more memorable. Right click on a block to set the location of where you want lightning to strike. F click to strike. The lightning of where you to where you right the, the block. Okay, so we have the name, material, and door finish. Let's create first a variable that we can manipulate in any way we want. So in the variable name is the name is not really important. But my preference is to name it X if I can think of anything important. And then let's set the type into a string. And we could we can choose number, but I prefer to use the string type because so we can make and set up different kinds of characters. So press set, save this and let's go back, create our first var activators so let's create the function that where we can set up the location by right clicking block we want to click so first we will use the use the player right click activator and in the type target we will set it to only block so it will only work if we click on a block okay let's go to variables let's and then press this the variable name, which will be the, the variable that we created, which has the variable name of x, so we'll type we'll type x, and then the type here will be set. We will not be using this uh, because it's not my preference on this method. And then the string update, we will be typing the block x y z placeholders, so we'll be type we'll be typing block x block y and Okay, so let's save it and then let's go back here. So what this activator does is that when you click on the block, it will go to, with this option, it will set the value of this X variable into the block placeholders. What, those, what do those block placeholders do is that it con those values will transform into the XYZ numbers of the block you have clicked. So, to test, we will give ourselves this item. To check what side of it or the information of this item, we will type slash EI inspect. Okay, see, in the bar EI X, there are no variable values yet. But, if we click on any block and then just type this command again, as you can see, 
we are now seeing these numbers which is what we want so let's move on to the lightning strike function we will then create a left click activator this is how we design this item so here and then there's no type target because we don't because we just want the ability to activate when we left click whether if it's air or block okay then let's go to clear command we will type the lightning command i prefer using the vanilla type so we when we time when we type the summon lightning command we will not we should not be typing like this summon lightning because it is bad because without the sudo or the sudo op custom command console will be the one who will be running the command and who knows where will it spawn and since we want the lightning to spawn specifically of where we want to be it we will type exec execute at layer which is the user of the item and then run summon lightning bolt and then we will type the placeholder of the variable that we just created and here is the full command but there might be some of you that are used to like seeing three values here which is the xyz variables to answer that since we, in the first variable this will dictate the whole xyz variables and the correct spacing so when this run it will properly type in the the xyz coordinate let's add a send message command here to see what kind of command that will run when we do a left click okay let's quickly click on the block a right click and then see if we do a left, left click this is the whole command that will be executed when we do a left click okay let's remove the send message command to see that the lightning will strike Okay, let's save it and then, okay, see, lightning will strike at where I have right clicked the item. We can also change the location however we want and how much we want. For example, I want to, to have lightning strike at where the cow is. So I will click the block below the cow and then do a left click. See? With variables in the variable update option, we can pretty much have a number that we can manipulate freely and do a bunch of stuff. Let's create another example. Okay, for the second example, I will be creating an item called a smoke screen, and I have written the idea in the lore. Right click to spawn a cloud of smoke that slows in blind players and mobs that dare to go near it. So, the whole goal of this item is to make a cloud of smoke that stays in that very same area and blind and slows down players and mobs that go near it. So, first, we will be creating a variable. Again, uh, we will be creating a regular var variable variable name x type string and string value no value and let's go uh, create a right click variable so first you just set up the xyz of the player so variable name x and type set and in the string update we'll be typing x y plus one z why did I type plus 1? Because in the XYZ variable, it will, in yes, it will type the X and Z coordinates of the user of the item, of where the user of the item used it. But in the Y coordinate, 
it represents the Y level of the feet of the player. But I want it to spawn at the head area, so I will be typing one. So for example, if if the Y coordinates of the user of the item is like 26, it will turn into 27. Okay, let's enter this. So once the uh, this right click activator run, it will set the variable of the x value into this. And then let's go here. Okay, and uh, here in the player command, uh, let's add the usage modification to negative one here and let's go to player commands so we will be typing loop start for example let's have the cloud last for 10 seconds okay 10 uh but i wanted to like rapidly spawn so let's type loop start 20 you have to keep in mind that every 20 ticks equals to 1 second. So, let's just type the commands first. I will type the particle and the effect command. So, shoot at player, run particle large smoke, x, uh, no, uh, 444. Four, four. Zero, four, and execute. Play. Positioned for X run. Effect. Give O E distance. Five. Well, let's do four and slowness two. Then delay tick ten and loop n. So what this full command does is that I will encase all these commands in a loop command so it will duplicate it. Like it will uh, all these four lines will be duplicated twenty times. So with delay tick ten it will only delay the commands by half a second. So, which means, if there are 20 of these, it will have the commands run for 10 seconds. Okay, let's finish it and then let's try the item. Okay, so once we run this post item, let's get out of here and then look. These particles are spawning even though I am far from it. See? To make it better, let's increase the size. I mean the the capacity. Let's add more. Two hundred. Okay. Let's save it and so for example, you are being chased, and if you want to like distract your enemies, you can just like right click this and get out of it there, and then any map or player that will go enter. That area will receive the blindness and slowness effect. So it's pretty much useful if you want to have like particles or anything that only spawns in that very area. So let's move on to our last example. Okay, uh, for our last example, this will be like a good example that that I will be using to tell you all that why we are using two variables of the same kind. Okay, let's go back to our previous examples. As you can see, this one has two right click activators. Like, with how it works, one, one activator should be enough, right? But no. Commands run first and then the variables. Like, the commands will do their stuff and then Afterwards, the variables do their stuff. So how bad is it? I will be showing it 
through an example. Where is it? Okay. This is example. So let's quickly create our string variable and then let's create an example. So for example, uh, yes, we have this and then the particle firework. So if the variable update runs first and then the commands, the particle should spawn around me, right? But no. So if I click this, nothing happened. But the when we type inspect, the coordinates are written in the item. But what coordinates? So let's let's use the item more, then it will be clear. Look. See? The particles are spawning to where I previously used the item. This solves the this answers the questions of the order of if the commands or the variable update runs first. So that is why we need two activators of the same kind if we want to do something like how the, we did with the smoke bomb. Because if we compacted the two activators into one, when the when a normal player uses it, it will not work because there's no values that the particle and the effect commands can use to specify the location of where the effects of the smoke bomb will appear. So if you have any more questions, you can simply approach me in the Discord server of, of Somar's Discord. So that's pretty much it. And have a good day.